to Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. KUM News Headlines are presented by Calvo's Insurance, protecting Micronesia for 85 years. Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus Finish Line Express is now open at Cars Plus in Mighty. The state-of-the-art car wash is now open seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on KUAM News Primetime. The FSM rebuking China's influence in the Pacific. I'm Tomas Maglonio with the story as Micronesia realigns itself with Taiwan. Grading it from A to D, how would you grade the public school facilities? I'm Julian Hernandez. We find out that answer following lengthy talks between education, health and elected officials who are still working on fixing the schools. Be on the lookout for box jellyfish, the Department of Agriculture sending out an advisory to be aware of these marine animals visiting our shores. I'm Mitsuki Hirayama with the story. Half a day and buenas noches. Buen venido para KUAM News Primetime. Guahu si Nick Delgado. Sa guahu si Destiny Cruz. Sito asma asi puri mananyo mizu guini na programa. Well, we begin with news that's captured the attention of many in recent days. The President of the Federated States of Micronesia, David Ponello, making a strong rebuke against China and what he describes as their bribery and spying in the Pacific. The international community taking notice as the outgoing leader aims to align the FSM with Taiwan instead of China. Tomas Manglotnia has more on our top story. Outgoing President of the Federated States of Micronesia, David Penuelu, says the islands are witnessing political warfare and increasing influence by China. In a 13-page letter to Micronesian lawmakers that has gripped global attention, Penuelu says China is seeking to ensure that in the event of a war in our blue Pacific continent between themselves and Taiwan, that the FSM is at best aligned with the PRC instead of the United States and at worst, that the FSM chooses to abstain altogether. Penuelu says China has been spying from what they say are research vessels within Micronesian territory. He writes, we are aware of PRC activity in our exclusive economic zone, whose purpose includes communicating with other PRC assets so as to help ensure that in the event of a missile or group of missiles ever needed to land a strike on the U.S. territory of Guam, that they would be successful in doing so. When the FSM sent patrol boats to check on the vessels, China warned them to stay away. That's when Penuelo placed a moratorium on Chinese research vessels in the FSM. That's just one of many events the president outlined where China placed pressure on the FSM government to be involved in infrastructure projects, international meetings, and policy decisions. He says China offers bribes to be silent. Penuelo writes that government officials have been given cash, alcohol, and other gifts from China. He writes to lawmakers asking, have you personally received a bribe from the PRC? If the answer is no, you are in the minority. The president now discussing possible diplomatic relations with Taiwan instead of China. He says Taiwan has already made some promises, including continuing all projects that China started. That potential shift coming amid compact of free association negotiations with the White House. He writes, we can play an essential role in preventing a war in our region. We can save the lives of our own Micronesian citizens. We can strengthen our sovereignty and independence, and we can do it while having our country at large benefit financially. Penuelo concluded his letter acknowledging the personal safety risks to him and his family for speaking up. But he says the peace and stability of our nation are more important. Tomas Maglonia, KUAM News. Is Guam getting its fair share of taxes from defense contractors in the multi-billion dollar military buildup? That's the focus of a new report just released by the public auditor. Nessa Lacanto has the details. The Defense Department is expected to spend upwards of $8 billion to relocate Marines from Okinawa. Local leaders have long wanted to ensure that defense contractors are paying the proper taxes on the millions they're being paid. Vice Speaker Tina Barnes had asked the Office of Public Auditor to look into it, and nearly two years later, the OPA found that very conservatively, Guam could be losing out on as much as $22 million, 
But Public Auditor B.J. Cruz adds that at this point, there's no telling how much more leakage there is. He says the U.S. Inspector General recommended as far back as 2014 that Revintax hire more staff for the Collections Division. Nine employees have been collecting almost a half a billion dollars in gross receipts tax for Guam, but they possibly could be collecting more if we would just increase the manpower there. DRT has agreed with the finding, but would need a budget increase for the positions. Cruz says local military leaders were also consulted. The Admiral came up probably with probably the best idea and recommendation that, that uh, is in this, in this report. He suggested that he would introduce revenue and taxation to DFAS. DFAS is the Defense Finance Accounting Service, which would be able to provide DRT with the record of contractor payments, which they could follow up on. Cruz says DRT did its own review of federal contractor tax filing compliance, which indicates that more than 20% may not be fully compliant. He suggests there's one very effective way to keep the contractors honest. Revenue and taxation needs to do some audits. Cruz says for now it's difficult to estimate how much more in taxes are being lost. Nestor Lacanto, KOAM News. Meanwhile, Vice Speaker Barnes says, she, Barnes says she plans to meet with Congressman Jim Moylan and local military leaders on the best way forward. Well, students typically work hard to get a good grade, but what is the grade of the public school facilities they are learning in? We continue to learn how several of the campuses are not making the grade as senators push for greater enforcement from health inspectors. KUAM's Julian Hernandez speaks to some in the public school community to get their assessment. Seeing it for themselves from inside the classroom, several of Guam's public school students grade the facilities, like FBLG middle schooler Dante Balansai. Maybe like uh, maybe a C. And at a couple of the high schools. I think JFK is an S plus school. Like it's, uh, it's from the schools like I went to for practice. I think that JFK kind of outshines most other schools for like condition. Maybe like Ukuru and um, maybe Southern are like at par. For Sanchez. For Sanchez or CJ. Or really like a, a B. I just feel like as when you get there, you don't really have that, you know, like that sense of like, joy because of how it looks. It looks kind of dull. That last student is Erica Westfall, a former Simon Sanchez shark, now at the home of the JFK Islanders. It's hopefully they read about Sanchez soon. I came from Sanchez and that's like a home to me and like seeing what my old friends are like facing through right now, like it's really hard for me. But like that's, they're really going strong through it. The woes at the facilities were highlighted during a public hearing held last week to discuss a bill that would ramp up school inspections. As KUAM first reported, the GECO campus recently got a D rating from the Department of Public Health Inspectors, who found multiple issues to include rat infestation. Sanchez High, Southern High, Ocean View Middle, and FBLG are among the schools recently in the spotlight for not making the grade. FBLG students are currently sharing a campus with Ukudu High until repairs are made at their school. Balansai shares how the double session has been going. I'm not a big fan of the schedule at Ukudu because we, so usually I go to my bus stop at like 11.30, then our bus picks us up at 12, then school starts at 1.15, then we get out at 5.45, and I'm usually home by 6.20, so it's like, Already getting dark. Meantime, Benevente Middle School teacher Marlene Mendiola gives her school a B plus. Everything, everything has changed, so it's actually really, it's really nice. Yes, yeah, it, it's really, it's really a nicer school than when I first started there. Okay, they they uh, they gutted out some of the ceilings and they added an entire canopy, so now the kids don't get wet. So it. it it's a really wonderful school, what they did for where I work. While plans are in the works to rebuild certain Guam DOE facilities, 
Mendiola adds those plants should include long-term upkeep. All the other schools that tried to rebuild and then the maintenance with it is another story. So yes, you can rebuild a new school, but if you start not maintaining it, then boom, the school will fall apart. Julianne Hernandez, KUAM News. The University of Guam says it cannot sustain another deep budget cut as it had to do in the immediate years past. UOG President Dr. Thomas Christ is making a very public plea for senators to provide the school with its full budget request this coming school year. Otherwise, accreditation could be threatened and important programs could face elimination. We've had a, a historic run of 16 years, continuous accreditation, the longest we've ever had in our 70 year history. And that's at risk this year because we've had a, a serious decline in our funding since, 20, well, certainly since 2018. So it's a 23% uh, dollar value drop in these five years. It's a 35% drop in inflation adjusted terms. That's a dramatic reduction in support for the university. Dr. Christ says the funding cuts can't continue and threaten all the progress the university has made over the years. That's why he's taking the unusual step of appealing to the community ahead of the actual budget hearing. We're losing people. We have 77 vacancies. Um, you know, it's a serious situation and we really need the public support for the university to get back to where we were five years ago. We'll have the full interview with President Christ in an upcoming edition of The Hub with Nestor Lacanto. Guam EPA cautioning there may be some additional swimmers in the waters this week. I know we're not talking about our destiny cruise here. <laughs> Fox jellyfish are expected to gather in shallow waters and appear on our shores. These clear box-shaped jellyfish are not of the lethal variety, but their venom can cause quite a bit of pain. Mitsuki Hirayama has more. Beachgoers beware! Box jellyfish are expected to be in Guam waters in the coming days. Guam Environmental Protection Agency predicting the marine stingers will be here from March 15th to March 17th. Guam Department of Agriculture's fisheries biologist Brent Tibbet says these jellyfish may not be deadly, but they pack a painful sting. The box jellyfish we have on Guam are not the deadly ones. They're not going to kill you, but they can give you a painful sting. And if you're somebody who's sensitive to stings like that, it can be a little more serious. I mean, it may be requiring visit a doctor. It's pain that Guam Department of Parks and Recreation lifeguard Corey Santos is all too familiar with. It's like a burning sensation. Um, if the tendrils do end up wrapping around the arm, uh, you do, it, it stings, but you're left with like a cool looking, um, I would say injury red marks like outlining the way the uh, the jellyfish wrapped you. Uh, not not the most fun. Awareness can prevent such an injury. Tibbet says don't get too close even if they wash up on shore and appear dead. He says their tentacles have a reach of up to approximately six feet and can still sting. I just like to give, you know, give a warning out uh, just to people to be aware of. You don't have to you know, stop going in the water, you know, at the public beaches where there are lifeguards. The lifeguards look for these all the time and will warn people if they're showing up in any numbers. But if you do get stung, he advises to remove the stingers with a stick or credit card, apply vinegar, then warm water. One misconception? Don't pee on it. No, I don't know. I don't understand people's fascination with peeing on each other. Mm -hmm. But that's not in the recommended treatments for jellyfish stings, no. And rest assured, at least at Epal Beach, lifeguards like Santos will be there to help. In the event that um, some of our patrons do uh, come up with an injury or whatnot, you know, we'll be sure to take care of them. Matsuki Hariyama, KUAM News. Hopefully that all clears up before the weekend. <laughs> well, we're going to take a quick break, but we have more news in a moment. Keep it here. You're watching KUAM. Get up-to-the-minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. The wait is over, Guam. The all-new state-of-the-art car wash is now open at Cars Plus. Introducing Finish Line Express, open seven days a week. The all-new cashless drive through car wash is also the largest car wash on island that can accommodate vehicles such as lifted Jeeps and full-size pickup trucks. Just roll Pick a wash, insert credit card, or show your EverWash app, and roll through. Plus, power vacuums are available to clean the interior. Show your vehicle some love today at the all-new car wash at Cars Plus and Mighty. Open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., seven days a week. We knew it was time to make these when we started asking things like, 
Wouldn't it be nice to be able to get a warm cinnamon roll right now? And why can't this kind of muffin come from the same place as a McMuffin? And isn't your coffee lonely without company from a glazed apple fritter? Well, consider these our three resounding yeses. Meet the new bakery sweets at McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. What you need to know from the Northern Marianas. Follow KUAM Cinemai on Instagram for the latest regional headlines. Welcome back to Primetime. A suspected threat to the Guam Memorial Hospital's internal network led to hospital officials reaching out to the FBI and Guam Homeland Security. The situation resulting in visitation being suspended and phone and emails being taken offline temporarily. It was on March 2nd, GMH's IT department found that someone who did not have authority to access the network somehow got in. Authorities were able to pinpoint who that person is, but the FBI is investigating to determine if any charges will be filed. Now 10 days later, the hospital says no patient health information and employee databases were breached. The network, however, was shut down as a precaution. GMH officials say the system is being restored and the hospital will soon announce when visitors will be allowed back inside. A man is arrested following a stabbing in Dedero. 19-year-old Jay Taisiki is charged with aggravated assault. Court documents state he got into an argument with another man before allegedly stabbing him in the chest and leg. A witness allegedly telling police they saw Taisiki chasing after the victim while holding a knife. Taisiki allegedly denying using a knife, though admitted to the argument. Authorities noting he had a separate case from April of last year where he allegedly threatened others at a local high school with a knife. A man is arrested accused of stealing a van from a local elementary school. 41-year-old Warren Kanata is charged with theft of a motor vehicle and theft of property. Police responded to Weddingale Elementary in Dededo on Friday after the van went missing. The driver told police they were preparing food for the students at the time. Court documents state the stolen vehicle was later found in the village. Multiple insulated coolers worth hundreds of dollars was reported missing and the front passenger window had been shattered. Kanata allegedly admitted to police he took the van in order to keep it safe, adding that he was going to call police but forgot, claiming he got too busy. Well, the CNMI House of Representatives unanimously voted to pass a bill that allows the five voting members of the Board of Education to establish a quorum with a simple majority of three instead of the current four-person requirement. The board has not been able to organize since January due to scheduling conflicts and apparent infighting among its members about the management by the Commissioner of Education, Dr. Alfred Ada. Two board members, Rhoda's Herman Atalik and Saipan's Andrew Orsino, Orsini, walked out of one of their recent meetings after the other members denied their request to meet in an executive session. There's nothing political about this bill. It's a big ship with a small rudder. And this bill is going to allow us to give that rudder some flexibility to steer wherever it needs to be. One intent of the original rule requiring four members was to ensure Rhoda and Tinian will be represented by their lone representatives. Community members have expressed concern over the delayed meetings as some ongoing school matters require board action. The board is set to meet March 23rd. The CNMI's Council on Developmental Disabilities met with legislators to voice their concerns over equitable access to transportation, jobs and programs on island. Regional correspondent Tomas Manglotnia reports. It is our mission and mandate from the Developmental Disabilities Bill of Rights Act of 2000 to amplify the voice of individuals with developmental disabilities in the CNMI. The council meeting one-on-one -on -one with lawmakers to voice their concerns when it comes to accessibility and equity for residents with developmental disabilities. Its members call themselves self-advocate leaders, part of a nonprofit called Voices sharing that mission to make life easier. And some days it's hard for me, life is hard for me to deal with. And some days I just don't go outside my house because I feel like life is not perfect to people with disabilities. He wants to see change, more accessible public transportation, fair job opportunities, and personal care assistance at home. Another self-advocate shared the need for scholarships and apprenticeship programs for the community. One speaker said she'd like to see more accessible public spaces for those using a wheelchair. Most beaches, pools, and 
businesses in the cinema don't have wheelchair accessibility. These businesses and public areas haven't had any success with it. Legislators telling them that their door is always open. No person with disabilities should be left behind. The council plans to meet with Rhoda and Tinian leaders later this month. Tomas Manglonia, KUAM News, Saipan. The Chamorro language through the wisdom of the indigenous people in praising healing grace is this year's Chamorro language competition theme. Today we find out how competitors are interpreting this for themselves. The vibrant sound of the Chamorro language living and breathing. Students from across the island and the NMI gathering at the University of Guam today for the Inatsaigen Finutsumoru, an annual Chamorro language competition started in the early 1990s. It's one way to perpetuate the Chamorro heritage, most especially among the youth. Participants breathing new life while honoring tradition through spoken word, art, dance, and more. For Emmy Lohan students Tara De La Cruz and Olivia Teriyama, they're holding on to the art of storytelling, doing so in their native tongue. I'm reading Chalam Pati Ilan Sota by Teresita Flores. I'm reading Sumahi and the Carabao by Michael Bavakwa and Jack Bavakwa. The two rehearsing for more than three months, memorizing 41 pages worth of stories combined. It's a proud feat for these young Chamaritas. It feels like I'm proud to know it because some people can't get a chance to learn it. And it's really, it's, it's cool to learn how to like pronounce it. I'm really, really proud because not a lot of people know how to do it. And even people that speak fluent Chamorro, they, it's hard for them to memorize the whole story. It's a sense of cultural pride that unifies participants. We always Guam you you stay in. This is still the Marianas. Politically, it might be two different entities, but we we are the Marianas. That's Senor Barcinas, director of the Chamorro and Carolinian Language and Heritage Studies Department for the CNMI Public School Systems at the helm. He's leading the largest delegation from Tinian, Saipan and Rhoda to Guam for the competition since the pandemic. So the good thing about this competition is it not just does it showcase the level of comprehension of the language for our students, but it also shows the resiliency of the culture that the language they are competing uh, to showcase is. Catch the second half of the competition this Tuesday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at UOG's Cavill Fieldhouse. Wow, good job there, Des. Thank Did the you. kids teach you a little bit of uh, Man, language? Man, they just blew me away. It was so beautiful to see that, honestly. So no. <laughs> no, but amazing job, guys. Yeah, good job, guys. Now for a look at your world at home. Beachgoers are out this weekend enjoying the water and sand here. They are captured at the beach side of Loti Hotel. A view and tomorrow music that you can listen to anytime with this QR code on Isla Digital Radio. Only Pizza Hut lets you surround your favorite pizza with greatness. The one and only stuffed crust pizza tempts your taste buds with melted cheese stuffed inside that amazing crust. And at just $18.99 with one topping, the stuffed crust pizza is truly irresistible. So grab your slice of pizza perfection with cheesy goodness baked right into the crust. The stuffed crust pizza, just $18.99 with one topping. Only at Pizza Hut, the island's best. Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier 
for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. He shoots, he scores. Welcome to KUAM Sports. Time to check in with our partners at Clutch Guam. Here's the final score. And you can catch the final score again this Wednesday right here on KUAM Sports. We're back with your birthday shout outs. Keep it here. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. Don't need to work, babe. Keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replay. And I'll be around. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. 
Biba, cumple años. Biba, check out your time to check out your cold so <laughs> creamy birthday club shout out submitted on KUEM.com. Happy birthday on the 13th of March to Jessica Cruz. Happy birthday, Jessica Renee Cruz from your family, who's very, very proud of you. Happy birthday, Jessica. Florence Nanetti Kirigoa, happy birthday to our queen at 82 years young. You are still the coolest and strongest of them all. We are blessed to celebrate today with you and we cherish you so much. We wish you good health, happiness, and love every day with all the love in the world, your family that literally wouldn't be here without you, Miss Florence. And we say we love you, all your Guam family. We hope you have a wonderful day, Miss Florence. Crystal Nadia Arceo, my precious daughter, my heart couldn't be more full of love for you on your special day today. With each year you grow, my adoration for you grows as well. You truly bring biggest blessings and greatest joy to me. Happy birthday with lots of love from Mama and from Papa Joe and the entire family. We love you. And Lakea Zion Lace, happy third birthday to my handsome baby coming from the family. Man, you guys, you guys absolutely send in amazing heartfelt birthday shout outs congratulations to the people who wrote these shout outs because you are making our birthday celebrants feel extra special today as they should because it is their birthday happy birthday to everyone celebrating out there yes happy birthday everyone all right our technical director jake sablon you there yep, I'm here. we close out the show with this video he's about to play for you from the tumon bay music festival finale held at the micronesia mall on saturday esegui eats and mizu primetime show sizu smaasi put in a nega so Guahu si Destiny Cruz, na fan safu hamzu za gosta i poeni. KUAM News Hotspot is brought to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. Hello, my friends. It is the Hotspot. That means we are back here in the studio. We hope you had a fantastic island weekend. Got some R&R, &R, hopefully more of the R than the other R depending on how you define that. And maybe you got more rest and relaxation, more relaxation than rest. Whatever the case is, we are your hospitable host and we are hanging out with you here for the next half hour. We got a lot of stuff to show you. So this is what we are covering for you today. We give you several chances to win movie passes because we want to send you to enjoy high quality entertainment on the silver screen. So we are going to show you what new movies are coming to our friends at Tango Theaters. Miss Constance is here, which means Ratings are going to go way up. The person who knows the most about movies on Guam. I thought I knew a lot. Constance is the queen of movies. She's coming up later. Also, we're going to take a, a look at what the weather has in store for us. Should you get a tan? Should you rock out with the SPF 900? We'll let you know because Landon is coming in for the National Weather Service. And we will tell you what is going on around the island with news bites. All right. But first off, I have in my hands a copy of a book that I want you to get. Now consider, actually go on Amazon and buy this right now. It is a vision board, a clip art book. Everybody's talking about vision boards, right? They're the thing to do. And this is written by a very dear friend of our show, Dr. Natalia Fakulo, who I have not seen on the KUM couch for some time. So half a day, Natalia. Half a day. Very good Thank to see you. you. Thank you so much for having me. I know we've been talking about having this for some time. Yeah, this is a passion project certainly of yours. You and I have, met, have had That's many conversations it. about your own interest and your own practice of yeah. vision boarding and everything yeah. and a lot of people talk about this and they say and i hate to phrase it like this but they say oh vision boarding that's a chick thing you know mm. it's it's international women's month we celebrate women the strength of the woman and everything like that vision boarding is truly for men and women alike because it's about manifesting and making your dreams a reality yes and and not only that but it also helps bring clarity and intentionality of you know planning forward and keeping the end in mind as simon Sinek says mm. um, 
to visualize, uh, use this as a visualization tool um, to really think about what you want for your future. Mm -hmm. And you know, this, this has been so helpful in that you know, even re research and studies show that it increases the likelihood when you start to use visualization as a tool in your planning. But it's only the first step. You know, the next step is really what you do after and creating smaller actionable steps that will help you get to the ending point, you know, whether it's um, a dream job or, you know, a, a passion project for yourself. Everybody's got to do like a life audit at some point, right? Yes, like, I'm on the older side of the spectrum. So my thing is, am I am where I'm, where I want to be in my career with my personal finances, yes. with my relationship status? Am I good and you know, am I doing enough for the community and everything? This is the perfect example of how I can actually set my goals and plan forward. Right. But I got to tell you, Natalia, I suck when it comes to art, right? Mm -hmm. I can't draw to save my life. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm copying JPEGs off the internet and everything like that, mm -hmm. I'm not good at art. So w will this still work for me? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And the great thing about this is that it has some textual um, uh, like phrases in the book. And it's by, I call it life buckets. Um, so you take a look at, Jason, you mentioned earlier, whether career, personal, professional goals, mm -hmm. um, spiritual, or even uh, fitness and health. Um, in each of the sections of the book, there's some photos along with some text that, you know, uh, it kind of takes, uh, gives the person a, an idea of, okay, what particularly within that life bucket they can focus on um, in pursuing their dreams. So whether it's working out, um, getting in shape, um, or even taking a trip uh, to their dream vacation, um, all of that's in here. And it really um, is just an opportunity to really lay that all out on the table mm -hmm. and take a look at the areas that, hey, I wanna do this. And one thing that I've been able to take away from this, by the way, here's, look at the, here you go, guys. These are just some of the, of the areas. The one that I'm on right now is this is, um, I'll, I'll show you guys in camera. This is uh, relationships and love. This is about, you know, do I have, <laughs> do I have the, the relationship of my dreams? Have I met my true love? Do, do I have, uh, am I a good parent? And everything like this. It's, you do put a certain amount of work into this because you, you are literally saying to yourself and you're putting down on paper, yes. this is what I want to achieve. But by no means do you, do you want to say, you have to spend like 900 hours a week like working on your vision board because then you'll never actually make your dreams come true. So this is a simple, lightweight, easy footprint way of actually kind of like figuring out what you want to do in life and getting there. Yes, and, and it starts with putting it onto paper. So mm -hmm. before you can even take a, you know, gather your scissors or your construction board and cut out some of these pieces that fit to your particular puzzle, um, there's a space in here, it's very interactive, where you actually get the opportunity to take a look at your, your life areas mm. and um, then write out what you'd like to uh, see uh, moving forward within relationships or finance or personal growth and travel and fitness. So really an opportunity to reflect on what is it within that realm that I want to focus on mm -hmm. um, these next three months or these next six months. So just an opportunity to visualize one because you know research studies say that um, it actually increases the likelihood and it helps you build confidence in, into achieving what you really want when you put it down on paper you visualize it mm -hmm. and, and you're it's codifying really that. it right exactly yeah mm -hmm. okay so and this isn't just for people that say like you know like the corporate crowd where we say like and i appreciate how you use that like everything's an action item and you say yes. like you know how do you move from strategizing um, to actually executing on like on a plan. That's fine and dandy for people to think that way. Yes, we both went yes. to business school, right? But of for, course. But, but you know, we're coming off of three years of probably the most stressful time of people like in our generation. This is for everybody and everybody can like take away some very positive mindsets with this. Yes, and, and that's the thing is that although it's, it's challenging and turbulent times, uh, what matters is what we do today. Mm -hmm. And you know, part of this is just a tool but it gets you um, thinking about what what you want. It gets you clear on where you want to be in the future, and you know whether it's through this uh, vision board book and and cutting out some of the pieces to fit to your own uh, personal puzzle, or even writing it down and journaling it. Um, it really does help um, increase the likelihood, but then also gets you aware of where you want in your goals, uh, to be with respect to your goals mm -hmm. in your life. Okay, so here is the mm -hmm. page right now from Natalia's book. Again, vision board, uh, clip art book. 
it's actually showing you the personal finance one, which I know everybody mm -hmm. in the world, again, coming off the pandemic, everybody's thinking, you know, am I making enough money? And I, I guess, as you said, this not only allows you to have clarity about where you want to go, but clarity yeah. sometimes, you know, like you actually get a lot more narrow than and ask a lot of questions of yourself that you probably didn't even know they were there. It's like, it's like, okay, I want to be rich, but maybe I don't want to be filthy rich. I don't want to be Mark Zuckerberg. Maybe I just want to be have enough money that I can get by and I'm completely okay with that. Like I have peace of mind. Yes, and you actually touched on it earlier where you I want to be rich though. <laughs> the piece, uh, don't we all? <laughs> that is the goal. Um, where it's, it's a self-reflection, but this is the first step, right? Is mm -hmm. to getting the general idea, but then asking yourself and getting comfortable being uncomfortable, asking yourself those questions, taking the next step, okay, with regard to finance, what, where, what's more realistic in the plan? Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, you have these life buckets, but you break it down into smart goals where it's really um, bite size that can lead you on that success path. Mm, you're not trying to take on too much at the same time. No, you're you're no, kind of like decomposing all. problems into like much more easier yeah. to digest problems. Yeah, we don't want to. And I'm sorry for using decomposing and digesting in the same sentence, everybody. <laughs> Wait, yes, yeah. so Mormon. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, well, you, you know, you know me. You know, that wasn't even trying to go there, but apparently I did. Okay, one thing I want to talk about too is is you mentioned a aspect that your book has a lot of relevance on is spirituality, right? Mm -hmm. um, we are in the Lenten season right now. Of course, everybody is taking the time. We would hope. Uh, to reflect and everybody, you know, should introspect and, and look inside. I want to get better with my creator, right? I, yeah. I want to have a, a more uh, better sense of like peace with myself. I want to make sure that I'm good with um, the people in my neighborhood, my, like my village. There are some questions in, in this, as positive as this book can be, that are probably going to be really, really challenging to me and that like that are going to be very difficult to answer. So how, how would you respond to like people that say, I've been on this one page in Italy about spirituality and mm -hmm. I've been stuck on this one page for like a week now because I, I just can't bring myself to like answer that question. Mm. This would I think help that. Well, I, I think it also stems with asking yourself what's important to you um, and, and in the season of your life and then also remembering whatever your, your center, your focal point is, um, how how everything else falls into place. We talk about faith and spirituality. Mm -hmm. For me, at the start of the year, I realized that I wanted to uh, place my faith at the center and have everything fall around rather than me trying to incorporate it around my life. There you go. So, you know, let this is just a testimony, <laughs> testament to, you know, just really practicing and um, putting it into action is the key part because you can use all these tools okay. and it, you know, doesn't go anywhere if you don't have an action plan. And perfect word that Natalia just used because she used the word testament. Now we want you guys to hit up Amazon right now and <laughs> testify. We do want to talk about the greatness of this book, right? Hallelujah. All right. This is on Amazon right now. And yeah. you guys can help Natalia. You guys know Natalia. She's been a member of yeah. our community doing really, really good things. Your reviews actually really help. And we can help get the word out about this. If you look on Amazon right now, just look up vision board clip art books. There's a ton of vision, mm -hmm. vision board books on Amazon. This one is hers. Right. Yes, and you know, wanted to thank you all in advance. Uh, you know, especially Jason for giving us the opportunity and giving me the opportunity to to help push a tool like this. Um, mm -hmm. And it's very important to be able to identify what it is you want in your future. And this is just one of the the many tools. Yes, um, but I challenge you, everyone out there, um, to take a look at the different core areas of your life and see. Really, um, ask yourself the question what's important to me in these areas and then develop a plan that has smart goals into how you can move forward into being your optimal self and really tapping into the zone of genius. There you go. Well, I cannot wait to start. So Natalia, thank you very much. This is a wonderful thing. Thank you so okay, much. And, and we're going we're gonna to take a, a quick commercial break, but first we are going to get to our trivia question. Then Natalia is actually going to sign mine. I got an autograph copy. Hopefully you will too. <laughs> All right. We were telling you that we want to send you to Tango Theaters. Scream 6 is here. The wonderful Jenna Ortega. You can see her there. All you got to do is correctly answer the trivia question. Send your answers via DM or Facebook on our Instagram pages. We're at KUM News. Here is the question. What popular Netflix series did Jenna Orca Ortega star in? Duh. There's like 80 million people doing the dance like all over TikTok and everything. But <laughs> that's why we want to send you to the movies because Jenna Ortega, she is now a household name. Are you a big fan of Jenna Ortega? Yeah. Yes. I there am. you go. Yeah. Natalia is a fan of hers and I'm a fan of Natalia's book. So let us know. <laughs> where Jenna Ortega got her big break on Netflix, and we will send you to the movies. Speaking of, Constance Kamat is standing by, and we are going to talk about what amazing films they're showing at Tango Theaters when we come back. Is it?
Yay! KUEM News, winner of the 2022 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, over 20 years of experience. You guys have been watching that little exchange that we had during the commercial break. And, of course, Natalia left, so that gives you time to get her book on Amazon. Constance Kamat is in the house, which means we are talking about movies. We are going Hollywood, as it were. But actually, we're going to send you to... Constance knows I'm just out of my mind right now. It must be Monday, Constance. So what's up? What's up? Okay. Oh, especially you... Scream. You love horror movies. Yeah, you know what's up? Scream is up. <laughs> it really is. Okay. Uh, sorry, Daniel in the back, please. W would you mind playing that one... Um... Uh, the, the movie poster for Scream 6, right? Because that's the one that's showing at, uh, at Tango Theaters. Right? I'm there you go. Okay. I got to say, Constance, that's Jenna Ortega. Of course, everybody loves Jenna. She's an absolute goddess right now, right? Mm -hmm. Look at the woman who's, like, opposite her. I swear, I thought that was Guam's own Pia Mia. It really does. Seriously. I mean, it really I can, does. And I wouldn't be... If, if Pia Mia was in Scream 6, I would be like, totally go watch this movie. I mean, watch this anyway, because... This is the latest installment of the Scream saga, the Scream franchise. And mm -hmm. Constance, I'm old enough to remember when I watched the original Scream. I've told you this privately, but you know the boss around here, Marie Calvo Manch, actually worked for Drew Barrymore at Flower, Flower Productions, That's Flower crazy. Films, I should say, when, when Drew Barrymore actually read the screenplay of what would be Scream. That was her big comeback moment. But people are going nuts for this movie. When though. you told me that, because I've, I've watched Scream 1, 2, 3, I skipped 4. I didn't know there was a four, so me seeing Hayden Panettiere was a surprise. Mm -hmm. I was like, what scream was she in? So when you told me about Miss Marie's, you know, like working with Drew Barrymore, I was like, who? I forgot she was in Scream 1 and she was the first kill. She was only in it for like 11 minutes. I like, know, but like, she was like, oh, still. Hey, hey, so what are you doing? And she's like, playing on the phone, like, yeah. no. And she's like, well, how can you tell what I'm wearing? Because I'm in your house. <laughs> and then it's like, whoa, this movie just got real. <laughs> But okay, but that kind of drives home the point that this is an established, um, it's got the, the an established franchise. Yeah, the franchise has history to it. It's got a huge fan base mm -hmm. and everything. And I'm sure the theaters must be packed with people that can't wait to see this. And especially it's got Jenna Ortega. There you go right now. Thank you, Daniel. Oh God, yeah. Here is the entire Scream franchise right now. Look at all these people. Most importantly, look at the characters who are no longer in the Scream franchise because, you know, Wes Craven did his thing. They're, they're just missing Sydney. Cindy Prescott. Oh, this, Nev Campbell. Yeah, this this time around. But yeah. we still got Gail Weathers. Courtney Cox is in it? Yeah. I know. That's what I was like. They, I, I feel like this one, I've been seeing and then I've been hearing a lot of good reviews on Scream 6. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I I watched Scream 5 and for me, you know, it was okay. But going into Scream 6, I wasn't sure what to expect. But the reviews... Mm -hmm. It's a good mix of the old Scream with the new cast of Scream bringing into like the old slasher feel it's it's contemporary now because i mean it deals with like a lot of themes that like young people take which is you know social clout mm -hmm. and showing off there you go there um, um, obviously it takes place in a metropolis so i mean that the backdrop of it again how can you guys not think that woman who is at what in the actress who is at 11 o'clock that's of, of course that's jenna ortega um, she plays like, samantha carpenter yeah she looks like pia mia yeah for real with, Sorry, guys, uh, I'm just with, fanboying here about brunette the screen. hair. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So, obviously, you want to see this. There are many people saying that, as you said, Constance, this is a throwback to what made the Scream franchise so good in the beginning, which, ironically, was a throwback to the slasher movies that mm -hmm. I grew up with and that I love from the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you, though, because you've been at Tango Theaters now so often. You know I'm going to geek out about this, right? <laughs> what is the movie that you guys have shown over the years that has elicited 
the craziest response like people like people literally screaming or have you had anybody like run out or like people like go out there and they're sweating crazy i remember i and it's ingrained in my head because this is why i love watching horror movies in the theater no i wasn't gonna say insidious conjuring the oh, yeah. first conjuring i remember i remember it being so busy that the line wrapped around you know we're, we're on the like, second floor of the, mm-hmm. the mall so it wrapped around where the escalator is at and really to actually be in the auditorium and then when someone you know they say don't go in there like you know, they're not supposed to go in there but the characters still go in there yeah i love watching horror movies in the theaters because this one guy it was so quiet in the auditorium too don't go in there oh no you went in there there's always that one guy it's always that one person and that's what makes you know watching a horror movie in the theater like, no, so no no different. no no don't look behind that bush no 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 no. <laughs> don't open the closet door no don't go into the house that's been barren for years what is wrong with you don't start the car because you know it's not gonna start i told you not to go in there now you died exactly i love it i just love but to, it but to see this and to have the theatrical mm-hmm. experience to to be able to play off the responses of other people i mean i had one kid was like kicking the chair like behind me and it was awesome yeah for me i i enjoy that i enjoy being scared by other people while we're watching this movie you know what's crazy too how you said that the line went all the way around like to the, to the escalators there at the micronesia mall mm-hmm. the only time that and i've been to your theater hundreds of times over the years the only time i've ever seen the line be that snake in that way was Force Awakens mm-hmm. and was Avengers Endgame. Oh, you should have seen. And so seen. Conjuring was like that too? I, well, I, I'm, I'm not disputing that. I mean, that's absolutely believable. There was also um, the last movie for Harry Potter and the last uh, movie for Twilight. Of where, course, Twilight would yeah. be that way. So it was, you know, it was crazy. Okay. And you brought up Twilight. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Twihard. I'm, I'm, I'm 48 years old and I love Twilight. Well, whatever. You know it's a good movie. Okay. So real quick. Um, uh, we have trivia going on right now. We were asking in the previous installment of the break, uh, what movie did Jenna Ortega really get her break in in Netflix? Here is the number two uh, question we have right now because Constance is literally giving away tickets if you just answer this question. Champions. It's supposed to be a really crazy, crazy comedy. It just has Woody Harrelson. What is Woody Harrelson's Zodiac sign? This is a little bit more esoteric. Yeah, Champions, I was... It's it's a family movie. I mean, Woody Harrelson. I, I love Woody Harrelson. I honestly do not know what Woody's zodiac sign is, so I'm gonna have to Google this. But if you happen to know that, let us know right now. And the wonderful, generous, benevolent, obviously a horror movie fan in all the right ways, Constance Kamat is gonna send you to the movies, welcome you with open arms, and give you the experience of a lifetime because you can either laugh or you can be scared out of your underwear. All right. <laughs> Again, I did not know I was going to say that. The first block, I said that whole thing about, you know, decomposition and digest, and now we're being scared of our, out, out of our underwear. Wow. If I get kicked off this show tomorrow, at least I went out with a bang. Well, tell you what, we have good things coming up after this. We're going to talk about the weather, and we have one more chance to send you to the movies because of the movie 65 with Adam Driver is also coming up. So please stay tuned. That is right after the break. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. It's better with more. Customize and save with the fastest internet speeds in the Marianas by adding mobile, phone, and TV to your bundle with Business Bundles Plus. Docomo Pacific Business. Work better together. The wait is over, Guam. The all-new state-of-the-art car wash is now open at Cars Plus. Introducing Finish Line Express, open seven days a week. The all-new cashless drive through car wash is also the largest car wash on island that can accommodate vehicles such as lifted Jeeps and full-size pickup trucks. Just roll up, pick a wash, insert credit card, or show your EverWash app, and roll through. Plus, power vacuums are available to clean the interior. Show your vehicle some love today at the all-new car wash at Cars Plus and Mighty. Open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., seven days a week. Subscribe to our KOM News Digest, our weekly email newsletter with all kinds of information straight to your inbox. Just subscribe and we'll make sure to keep you informed and entertained with news from the KOM. 
news team, what to watch on NBC and CBS, and the latest promotions from KUAM Communications. Go to KUAM.com, click on the newsletter tab at the top of the homepage, register, and you're all set. Brought to you by Uno Go, Guam On Demand. You guys know me, I love Guam, I love being outdoors, and I love helping people. That's what we're all about here at the KUM Care Force. And this Saturday, we are going to be at GPO from 10 to 1 doing St. Baldrick's. I'm going to get my head shaved, clearly. I haven't had my hair cut in a while, and we are going to shave our heads to raise money to conquer children's cancer. Let's bring in Landon Eidlip from the National Weather Service. He's the lead meteorologist. Landon, I don't believe, needs his hair cut, but Landon, I will be going, uh, I'll be going dome. I'm going to get your hair cut on Saturday. So please, can you tell me, Will I need to actually put like uh, SPF 65 like on my head when I go out and do my uh, my cardio? That's a standard practice here on Guam. Always have it handy with you when your hair is short because even if it's cloudy, you can still get that sun exposure. So always be careful about that. <laughs> That's a pro tip from Landon. Okay, so so we will we will be expecting some uh, sun if I'm if I'm reading you right. That's correct, and it's a beautiful day out there today, and it wasn't so bad uh, the last couple of days over the weekend. There's quite a few clouds across uh, much of Guam yesterday, and that was a, a little taste of what we typically would see more in the summer and the fall months when the trade winds really just collapsed. We had what we call island effect convection, so there wasn't too much convection to speak of, but some areas did see some showers. That was because the trade winds were very slow. Uh, we're kind of in a, a uh, midpoint between several weather features with the winter weather pattern to our north, the shear lines, and then more of a broad ridge was right over area. So it really collapsed the winds. And so we're starting to see some of that little daytime convection right over here. You see the clouds building up right over the islands. That won't be the theme later this week when the trade winds return because we do have a, a shear line, a very diffuse shear line popping right down through the CNMI to our north. That's going to drop through our area with little fanfare. We're not expecting too much showers with this. But there will be another shear line that's going to drop down southward again with little fanfare Wednesday and Thursday. But the winds will pick up considerably late Wednesday into Thursday. So we're going to be back to the breezy trade wind pattern, but generally dry for most of this week. But the season surf, they will be building along east-facing reefs and northeast-facing reefs later this week so watch out for that because winter is not over we still have those shear lines bouncing around but dry and not bad this week all right so um sunny conditions and yet it will be windy typical island weather land and matt we appreciate it much i'm just sorry we got we got a limited amount of time we got some movie ticks to give away but you know what stay tuned because if you're tuning in to um uh to youtube you could possibly send uh, we could send you to the movies. 65 is coming up, so we want to give you a chance to go as well, Len. Oh, World Meteorology Day. Okay, I'll give you 10 seconds. What do you want to say about that? <laughs> Come visit us on Thursday, March 23rd, as we celebrate World Meteorological Day with our first ever super huge open house event. Okay, anytime a meteorologist says super huge, I get super, super nervous, but that's cool. We're in good hands with Landon. All right, stay tuned. We are giving away tickets to 65 when we return. When is Zen Hafe Day? As you all know, our island's had a very successful year, and I'd love to hear about all of the progress we've made. Skyler, why don't we start with you? We've helped over 1,200 Guam kids and their families pay for childcare. And that's over $5.5 million in childcare costs so far. Over 130 after school and community care programs have received grant funding for programs like swimming. And cycling. And soccer. And jiu-jitsu. We've also graduated three Cohorts. And I provide our certification program at GCC. And certified over 75 relative care providers. Looks like we have a messaging coming from headquarters. Hi kids, I just want to say congratulations on all your successes this past Without you. Keep up the great work. He's ready for recess. This ad is paid for with funds administered by the Department of Public Health and Social Services. All right, to end the show, Miss Constance has the honor of she is actually going to read with her own lovely voice what our third trivia is for the movie that you've got coming out 65. All right, Constance, what do you got? Okay, so here's your last chance to win a pair of tickets to 65. What was Adam Driver's character in the famous movie series Star Wars? Jar Jar Binks. No. Okay, so it's not Jar Jar Binks. No. Okay, okay, one down. You've got like 9,000 <laughs> other characters in the Star Wars universe. Adam Driver, of course, like got 
international fame for playing this character. I know who it is, I would think, right? Baby Yoda. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so Constance, thank you again, man. You thank all, you, you always, so much. you always hook people up. You always want to make sure that people have a fantastic time in the movies, and we really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Okay, you got any Easter movies coming out? We do. We okay. have Super Mario. That's an Easter movie. You remember in the Mario, you pick up the egg. So okay, we'll talk about that next week. <laughs> yes. Okay. Bye bye, everybody. Thanks for bye. watching the Hotspot for Constance and all of us here on the show. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.